morning. It's good seeing you. Thank you for being here and being part of this very, very special service. This is uh, our homecoming service. Uh, so if you're here and you're visiting, I want to invite you to stay after the service and go down to the building behind us, our Christian Life Center. We've got plenty of food there, so come and uh, stay, eat, get to know uh, the folks that are part of this church family, and we're glad to have all of you here. We've got a special guest, Kenny Davis and his wife, Kim. And so uh, we're glad many of you know Kenny. We were talking last night. We had supper together, and we were talking last night. He's been here. This will be his fourth time, I think, with us to Revival. It was uh, maybe a homecoming before that. So uh, I've known Kenny for a long time. He, told, he reminded me of how we met uh, when I was pastoring at White Level Baptist Church. I hadn't been there very long and happened to be at home one day. I think kids were at school and got a knock on the door, and here's this guy at my door, and he said, are you the new pastor at White Level? And I said, I am. And he said, well, the Lord just told me I needed to pray with you. And so that started a long prayer partnership that we've had for over 30 years now. And so he's a good friend. Love this guy. Love his wife, Kim. She's here with us. She's a Bible teacher and a prayer warrior. I thought she was going to sing with him, and she told me she was not. <laughs> so so if you look at the bulletin, my bad. My bad. My mistake on that, okay? But we're glad that you're here. Looking forward to having a great service and just praying that God's going to speak with us and to us. Let's pray. Holy Father, you're good, you're kind, you're loving. There's absolutely no one like you. You are a, you bless us. As we found the word blessing literally means to kneel down. And so when we come to have audience with you, you kneel down and listen to your children. And so, Father, we pray for this service today. We pray for those that will be singing. We pray for those that will be speaking. We pray that your hand will be upon this congregation that you'll move in our midst, that we'll sense your presence, that we'll know that you're with us. And we'll be glad that we were in your house today. Father, I'm sure there are many that come here today with heavy loads that are burdened. And Jesus, you said if we brought those heavy loads to you, you would take them. That your yoke is easy, your load is light. And so, Lord, if when the opportunity comes, if we are carrying those kinds of loads, that we'll bring them to you, we'll lay them down and trust God that you'll not only pick the load up, but you'll pick us up as well. We pray, God, for those that may be here and you don't even know why they're here, that you would speak to their hearts and you would call many to you saying, I have a plan for your life. I have a purpose in you and it's found in trusting my son, Jesus. God, we ask that you would just meet us and would rejoice and would be glad and would be grateful. Again, I pray a special anointing on Kenny today as he brings a message that you've laid on his heart. And that we're going to understand that it's for every single one of us here. When your children gather together, you speak to all of us. And so give us ears that will listen, minds that will focus, and hearts that will receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's lift our voices now and stand together as we sing. Love lifted me. Let's stand and sing. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. All my heart to Him I give, ever to Him I'll cling. In his blessed presence live, ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true, merits my soul's best songs. Faithful loving service to, to him belongs. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. 
love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Souls in danger, look above, Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, billows his will obey. He your Savior wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Love that song. Y'all just remain standing and we're going to sing all together. All my hope is in Jesus. I've been held by the Savior. I felt fire from above. I've been down to the river. And I ain't the same, a prodigal return. And all my hope is in Jesus. Thank God my yesterday is gone. All my sins are forgiven. And I've been washed by the blood. I'm no stranger to prison. I've worn shackles and chains, but I've been freed and forgiven. I'm not going back. I'll never be the same. That's why I sing, all my hope is in Jesus. Thank God my yesterday is gone. And all my sins are forgiven. And I've been washed by Blood. There's a kind of thing that just breaks a man. Ooh. Break him down to his knees. God, I've been broken more than a time or two. Yes, Lord. Then he picked me up. Show me what it means to be mad. That's why I'm singing. Oh, my hope is in Jesus. Thank God my yesterday is gone. And all my sins are forgiven. Bye. Uh -huh. 
That's good singing, amen. amen. We give praise to the living God because he is our God, amen. That kind of music, woo, that's, that's heavenly to me. Kim and I are so thrilled to be with y'all today, and um, Eddie and I have been communicating. That is unusual. I don't normally send anything to anybody when I'm coming. I just come and get there, and we do everything on the fly. But he has worked hard to get things ready, this track and different things of music, and, um, and it's just a blessing. Isn't it a blessing to be in the house of the Lord? Yeah. It really, really is. Uh, I was riding down the road, which we do, right? <laughs> Woo! Riding down the road, my best place to be with the Lord. Amen? Amen. I love it. I love to be with Jesus. And I'm listening on the radio to a song. Now, this is a new song to me, too. I hadn't really heard it. It's not really new. But it's a whole lot of heaven in the house. You know what? There is a whole lot of heaven in the house. We say, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right? Bring it down. Bring it down. Live in that kingdom of God. So this song came on the radio, and I said, mm -hmm. we're going to sing that song. <laughs> so I sent all this to Eddie, and uh, we put this together. It's got a whole lot of heaven in the house. So if you catch hold of this chorus, uh, will the words be up there for them? Okay. Okay. You can do it. Okay. And you can clap. And do whatever the Lord brings in your heart and spirit, okay? All right, brother. Hallelujah. He's in the house. There's a whole lot of heaven in the house. There's a whole lot of heaven in the house. A little bit of praise for the long, long way that A little bit of praise goes a long, long way. There's a whole lot of heaven in the house. Anytime believers want to worship, anytime the breath is real, the spirit of the love will enter. Suddenly the house is filled, all the way up to the ceiling, all the way down to the floor. It's a whole lot more than a feeling when you're in the presence of the Lord. Whole lot of heaven in the house. Sing it with me. Whole lot of heaven in the house. Little bit of praise goes a long, long way. There's a whole lot of heaven in the house. There's a whole lot of heaven in the house. There's a whole lot of heaven in the house. A little bit of praise goes a long, long way. There's a whole lot of heaven in the house. Once there was 120 gathered in the upper room. They tarried for the Holy Spirit. They knew it'd be coming soon. Uh, finally, the place was shaken. No one in the room stood still. 
When the count was finally taken, everybody in the house was filled. There's an audience, come on. There's a whole lot of heaven in the house. Little bit of praise goes a long, long way. There's a whole lot of heaven in the house. There's a whole lot of heaven in the house. There's a whole lot of heaven in the house. A little bit of praise goes a long, long way. There's a whole lot of heaven in the house. There's a whole lot of heaven in the house. There's a whole lot of heaven in the house. A little bit of praise goes a long, long way. There's a whole lot of heaven in the house. There's a whole lot of heaven in the house. There's a whole lot of heaven in the house. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Eddie. Thank you to the band as well. Um, praise God. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Uh, before I do the next song, you want to come and do the poem, honey? I want my honey bun up here. How many of y'all like to have your honey bun nearby? I mean, really? Amen. This is Kimberly. Actually, Kim, who loves Jesus, wow, she's a prayer warrior, y'all. If you want some people praying for you, send in your prayer request <laughs> to my beloved. She goes down to the cabin and just spends that time with Jesus, and the Lord gave her this poem to share with y'all. Good morning. Good morning. This, uh, this poem is something that the Lord gave to me. It's not a traditional rhyming poem, but it is a poem. And um, uh, I would invite you to hear what the message of it is. It's called The Well. Jesus, resting by the well, tired from his journey. Thirsty? He must needs go through Samaria. A divine appointment. The woman coming to the well in the heat of the day. Thirsty? You have no idea. She must constantly come to fill her vessel. Jesus, will you give me a drink? Who really needed the, the drink? If she knew, she would have asked him. The woman, sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep problem or provision if she saw she would have asked him living water where is it what is it he sees her need she sees his provision i am he and she knew jesus his thirst quenched, the woman, her thirst quenched. The well was but a place where the need was met. The thirst was quenched. Jacob's well, yes, he had many needs too. How about you, all of us? Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Problem? or provision if we see him we will ask him living water deep calls to deep the provision is even more real than the problem I am he do we know Jesus waits at the well with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and the water becomes a flowing river. Get in that river today. Thank you so much, Kim. I want to sing this song and sing it over you and me today. The name of Jesus. His name is greater and more powerful than anything in this world. Amen. I 
I just want to speak in the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom, I speak Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is love. Hallelujah, Lord. Pray. Every stronghold shine through the shadow, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety. To every soul held captive by depression, I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is love. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadow, burn like a fire, shout Jesus from the mountain, Jesus in the street, Jesus in the darkness, over every enemy, Jesus, for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus, oh, my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is love. Pray every stronghold shine through the shadow burn like a fire your name is power your name is healing your name is love Break every stronghold, shine through the shadow, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Amen.
Amen. Amen. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Amen. beautiful black lady and she would say would you sing us a song so while they're back there with all the nets on their heads and everything I'm singing all through the line in the garden or Jesus 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 there's something about that name all over everywhere we are y'all we can let the name of Jesus be big amen to touch somebody else's life we can be empowered by his love to love on them. The thing that started me doing it was I went down through the aisles humming. So I hum everywhere, don't I? My daddy used to do that. Have you ever ridden, ridden with somebody that don't talk a lot, but they're over there humming the whole time? So daddy would hum all the time. He's driving. So that's me. I start either humming or singing or doing something. So wherever I go, I just want to be that because that's who I am. I go between the aisles singing, humming Jesus, and when I get up to the front, 
They asked me would I sing a song. That was the first time, and I did it. I sang to the top of my voice, because you know what? That's what God gave me. He gave me a voice. He gives us all a voice. He gave me a voice to sing about him. And so I lift up his voice wherever I am. I, I remember going into cafeterias and going back in the kitchen and singing for people who are still doing, <laughs> they're still preparing the meals. Some people during this pandemic might have had a fit over that, but I was singing back there to the Lord for those people, and it was awesome. The man I traveled with, I want to just mention him, but uh, um, he just went to be with Jesus. I traveled with him for 40 years, John Hobbs, and he just went to be with the Lord, and he would always put me up to something. You know what I mean? He said, now you go over there. We're in the middle of Philadelphia, and this guy's preaching on the corner of the sidewalk. And he's got a loudspeaker. That's when you could have loudspeakers. So he had a loudspeaker. And he was a, a, a precious black man. And he was just preaching. And John said, go over there and sing him a song. So I went over there and began to sing. Right, I asked him first. I said, can I sing you a song? He said, if it's about Jesus, you can. And so I sang Rise Again by Dallas Holmes. And I just began to sing right there in the middle of Philadelphia. And as people came by, they started gathering around and listening. The message of Jesus, the word of Jesus, the life of Jesus, living and dwelling within us, being who God created us to be wherever we are. Amen? Jerry does it on the ball field, I know. Still playing ball, brother. You are hitting them balls. I'm like... We're sitting there at the table last night. He said, he's still playing softball. I was like, whoo. Me running around a, a, a bases right now would be interesting. But that's awesome, Jerry. And I'm sure you have an opportunity to be who Christ uh, is within you and be that Christ in uh, you to share Jesus wherever you are. Amen? And so today I have come with a message to share with you from 2 Timothy, and it is in chapter 1. And on the way up here, the Lord changed my message. I had prepared something else, and the Lord changed my message in the car, uh, and he said, you need to share this scripture. So I want to do that. Y'all okay out there? Everybody all right? Wave your hand if you're all right. <laughs> hey, praise God. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up what? The gift of God, which is in, in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel, according to what? The power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Whereunto I'm appointed a preacher an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he's able to keep that 
which I have committed unto him against that day. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. For that good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. Stirring up the gift of God, the very life of God within you. When you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, a well of living water comes in your heart, in your belly. The Bible talks about out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So when you receive Jesus Christ, when you're born again, you're from the inside out. You have that well of living water in you. A well of life in Christ. When it talks about stirring up the gift, that is a yielding to the Lord, Jesus Christ, to allow that living water to be over you and flowing through you, that life flowing through you. You know, no matter how that's done, it, it may be that that very living water, that, that river flowing through you comes out through you by making an apple pie and taking it to a Mabel or, or Glenda or whoever. It may be in you that you are, you see someone along the way that's really hurting, like um, yesterday at our grandson's football, flag football game that we went to. There was a little boy that got hurt on the side, and Kim reminded me on the way up here. She said, did you see that other little boy go over to the one who got hurt and bow down beside him just to see if he was all right, to love on him? like the Good Samaritan, right? Like the one who would come and just show that kind of love. Well, I want to tell you that the Lord gave us not a spirit of power, I mean fear. He didn't give us a spirit of fear, but power and love and sound mind. Let's look first at the love of that little boy and let's see how love can be functioning in our lives. As I mentioned John Hobbs earlier, um, I want to share something about him that he imparted into my life. He showed me how to help people relax and receive the love that he shared with them. He showed me when he came into a room to just calm people by laughter or whatever, but it was compassion coming out of his heart. So when he came into a room, love entered that room, and it showed me that when you are around other people, when you open up your heart and have compassion, it can break through, and God can do miracles. Amen? God can bring about miracles by just that love pouring out of your heart to someone who may, uh, who may need that love. And they may not look so good. They may not smell so good. They may not look like the person that you would want to love. And they may not act like the person you would want to love. But that love that comes out of our spirit breaks forth and breaks the things all around I've been reading a book about a man named Pastor Chad Brown, and it was written by Star Daily. And it was an aw it's an awesome book talking about how this pastor, and I want to share this uh, with you, how this pastor came to a point in his life that he recognized that that love, that there needed to be a deeper place. 
And I'm going to use this uh, Dr. E. Stanley Jones uh, quote, quote from Christ on the Indian Road of how he had come to his B.R. And that's a place where uh, also Alexander had come and turned back. Alexander the Great came to that point and turned back. He could go no further. For Dr. Jones realized he could go no further until he had gone deeper. Now listen carefully to that. Dr. E. Stanley Jones, in this quote, recognized that he could go no further until he had gone deeper. And as Dr. Brown read these lines, they clicked. For it was his experience, too. He said, I can go no further till I've gone deeper. He took his Bible in his hands and sat down and thought with compassion about the members of his church, and his heart went out to them in love. And from that moment, when from that moment, God began to deal with who? He began to deal with him. He began to deal with him on his knees about the things in his life. And God gave him the scripture in 1 John 1, 9. And in 1 John 1, 9, where it says, if you will confess, let's read it from there, okay? 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let me tell you, that kind of love that he was talking about, about going deeper before he could go further. God began to deal with things in Dr. Brown's, Dr. Pastor Brown's life. And he began to show him things. And God, he, he just said, Lord, I can go no further with this church or with these members of this church until you show me how to love. One of the greatest things that uh, there was a man named Bob... Jones, and Kim was sharing one time with me, and she was sharing, she was reading the book about Bob Jones, and he had, he had died and gone to heaven. You, you want to come and tell that? Okay, if I mess up, will you help me? <laughs> Bob Jones had gone to heaven, and the Lord, one of the main things the Lord asked him said, have you learned how to love? Did you learn how to love? Did you learn how to love? And Bob Jones didn't die. He came back and lived, and that really went into his heart. Have I learned how to love like God loves? Have I learned to uh, reach down into the deeper place and love somebody with the love of the Lord and recognize that sometimes it is really hard to love people that are unlovable, right? And it's, unlove it's hard to love them sometimes when they don't look like we do, right? And when they don't act like we do, but God desires for us to love them. God also desires for us to share the truth with them. Did you notice in the song that I sang? Or that, um, maybe that's the song I'm going to sing later. <laughs> if the truth hurts, we still tell it. We share it in love. We share it with humility. And we reach out. And sometimes mercy and truth, as they're mixed, they can stir a heart. They can stir the gift of God in someone that has run away from God. They've run away from God and they're trying to get away from the experience of the Holy Spirit convicting them of their life. But if we would understand that deep inside that a stirring can come by God's kind of love, mercy and truth, kissing and recognizing. I remember uh, actually my daddy Daddy was a strong man, and, and they lived in Taylorsville. 
and Daddy was a logger, and he would log, and Mother would get out there and log with him all the way up to age 70 after we left home. She didn't really get out in the woods until all the children left home, but then she went out there and joined Daddy in the woods, and uh, they would log together. Daddy was a strong man, physically, like a Paul Bunyan, but he was also a man of God kind of love, where mercy would be mixed with truth. Now, how many of you know, as a parent, he would mix some chastisement. I would have some, some discipline uh, that would need to be there, where God would use that to teach me to grow up. Mercy and truth kissing, because Daddy was strong, Daddy loved me, and he wanted me to walk with God in the God kind of love. So the stirring up of the gift of the Holy Spirit was not only by, uh, by the stirring by other people around me recognizing that that love needed to be poured out, but my daddy started me understanding that kind of love with mercy and truth being mixed. There's no kind of love that can go deeper in your life than the kind that you get alone with God and get to know the lover. You get to know Jesus. You spend time talking with him. You spend time uh, listening to his voice and letting him speak into your heart. And then you look into his word, and his word mixed with faith, and you start walking that out in your life. The river of life is powerful the life, the river flowing in you. As you receive Jesus Christ, a well of living water comes to dwell within you. And then as you understand that you need to relate your life to the Lord and be led by the Spirit, you understand that you're making Jesus the Lord of your life. Letting him be your God and helping you to drink deeper, deep calling to deep in your life, understanding that only God can break through some of these barriers that have come in our life because of our woundedness, because of the things that we have gone through and the woundedness that has come into our life, we need to recognize that that can be broken off by the presence of Jesus. And when I spoke the name of Jesus in the song and sung it over you, Jesus was speaking into your heart. He was speaking over you to break those bondages, to break those things that were binding you in your life off so that you could come to the fullness of that joy and you could stir up the gift of God in you and the life of God through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the power of the Holy Spirit, because God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind, a mind that would be able to be calmed by the word, just like Jesus calmed the sea. He spoke to the sea and calmed it. He can calm our minds when we spend time with him and let him speak into our lives. Out of our belly flows rivers of living water. Understanding that Jesus is the baptizer. Jesus is the one who bathes us in his Holy Spirit. He is the one that, that touches us. And today it is my heart for the very life of Jesus to touch you. For his very power, his love, and sound mind being planted in your life today because he's big. He's a big God. I shared with you earlier that um, John Hobbs taught me how to, how to love people. We would go into a restaurant at times, and we would be there, sitting there together. I remember once 
we came into a Waffle House. It was very late, and we did a lot of traveling late sometimes, and we just sat down, and we were laughing. And it, it just seemed like we were, like, tired and just laughing. But as we were laughing, John began to share with our waitress about Jesus. And she said, well, y'all are so happy. He said, well, it's greater than happiness. It's a joy down deep. And he said, honey, let me tell you about Jesus. And so we told her about the Lord, and we shared Jesus. But one of the things that I saw about Johnny was that before we left, after we shared the message to Jesus and found out about this young lady's life and he would always ask about people's lives. He left a tip that was so big, and also he began to pay for the meals of other people in the place, and he began to give money to all the kitchen workers. He said, Kenny, you can't share the gospel of Jesus and leave a little pee on tip. He said, you got to be real. you got to love these people. Some of these people don't understand it, and they will understand that kind of love. So that kind of love would stir up a gift inside of someone, and it did. And the waitress wanted to know more about Jesus, his love being poured out. His power would break through. I've, I've seen in my life, the power of God flow in young people in youth camps when they began to worship. Do you know the power of people really worshiping God when they just release themselves to God? Many of the young people would come to the youth camp and they would be so overcome by burden. You would see it the minute they came in the door. They were just covered with burdens and it just seemed like they didn't want to be there. Their parents made them come. And what we would do was we would praise God and God would inhabit our praise. We would praise God and I led worship and we began to praise God. And some began to catch on that they could praise God and God would inhabit their praise. The gift of God would be stirred up as they praised God. So some of the young people would be praising and some would be over in the corner trying to hide. But then we began to love on them. And we began to have prayer groups where we prayed together and we showed them how much we loved them. And then that broke through into their heart to let them know we cared about them and loved them. And pretty soon, in the praise and worship, there were more of the youth that joined to send their praises up to God and to lift their hearts up to God. And even the ones in the corner by the middle of the week had come halfway. Not all the way, but halfway. But by the end of the week, the love of God, the power of God, the praise of God, the anointing of God broke through to the young people. And they were so amazed. We are, were so amazed at the presence of God in the place. God was stirred up, and young people began to weep, and they began to ask Jesus to forgive them of their sins. And they began to just call on the name of Jesus, and we began to pray for them. And they began to let go of these burdens and these things that were heavy on them. As they let them go, joy filled the room, and laughter filled the room, and power filled the room, and the spirit of love filled the room. And the spirit of, of power, love, and sound mind was on those young people. Some had not wanted to come. Some weren't willing to come. But their parents loved them enough to have them there to receive from God. And God began to speak into their lives. And the gift of God was being stirred up in their hearts. Wherever I've gone, I've seen the power of God it doesn't matter where you are. You can find out that when you begin to love on someone, it breaks through. When I'm singing Jesus in Walmart, 
And when I'm sharing Jesus on the street or wherever, God is there. Last night, Tim shared with Gary how I had gone to Russia in the early, I think it was 1988, maybe, when I went to Russia. And I uh, was with a group of ministers and other members of churches, and we were praying over the St. Petersburg every morning, and we'd go out and take Bibles into the schools. It was amazing what we could do. But also, I was asked to sing in a cathedral. They didn't have no sound system, but they wanted us to uh, me to sing because they found out that I could sing. And they asked me if I would, and I did. There was a lady there that came out that was an opera star first. And I thought, oh, Lord, here I am, a country boy, and this lady can sing, not me. And then Jimmy Blackwood sang. And then a lady from Kentucky that sang like Sandy Patty, she sang. Then there was a choir from Russia, a youth choir. Then there was a choir from Sweden, a youth choir. And they all sang, and they had me laugh. But God had spoken. God had stirred within my spirit a song to sing to them. And I began to sing, He Hideth My Soul. And they began to weep, thousands of people. That It was a Bible marathon that they were having and people had followed a, a person that held up a Bible and followed another person that hold, held up um, a sword. And they had come into this big cathedral of this Greek Orthodox church and had come into that place. And thousands were there. And they began to weep. And as I sang about the eyes of my soul, all of them began to understand. They had been hiding. Their, they had to hide to worship. They had to hide to be with the Lord. But as they hid to be with the Lord, they had had some powerful times with God. So when I began to sing about, he hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock. Yea, God. They began to weep. And when I finished, they stood to their feet and they began to clap uncontrollably. They began to clap. But who were they clapping to? To the Lord. They were clapping to the Lord. It was his anointing that destroyed the yokes over them. The things that had held them down. That had making them be quiet. Somewhat like some of the pandemic that kept us away from the house of God. Or tried to keep us from sharing our faith different places. Let me tell you something. They stood to their feet and they began to praise God. They began to worship the living God. And as they did, the anointing fell. And they began to weep. And God did a powerful work in that place. I was sitting there before I sang. And I said, Lord, you've got to be kidding. All of these people are so gifted and talented. How can I stand? And he said, you sing this song because I told you to. That's just what we do, y'all. We listen and we obey what he tells us to do. And when we do, we reap the fruit of it. It stirs up the, the gift of God. It was stirring up the gift of God inside of them. And some of them accepted the Lord that night, the minister of religion for the, I, I think it was the Communist Party, received Jesus. There were others that received the Lord that were in, in government in other places. They received Jesus, the power of God, the power, the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and the spirit of a sound mind. Fill that place, and they didn't have to worry anymore about the enemy coming in there. They could worship freely in that place like you did today. You worshiped freely. You praised God. As you worshiped, you stirred up the gift of God inside of you. 
as you worship, the living water was being stirred. As you get to a point in your life when God says to you, hey, if you want to go further, go deeper. Get deeper. Take that living water and drink of the Lord. Drink deeply. Let God touch you in a powerful way through that living water, through Jesus, through his blood that he shed for you. Jesus, the very name of Jesus, will destroy the yokes of bondage. And as I sang that song about Jesus, oh, let his name, let his, let his name, let Jesus calm your fears. Let him take away that depression. When Jesus was moved with compassion, as he was moved with compassion, there were people that would come to him. People were healed. The Jesus in you can be stirred up. That compassion can be stirred up to break into a person's heart when they don't even realize what's happened. God's touching them and loving on them and showing them there's more. I love Jesus. How about y'all? My son, Kevin, when he was little, he used to sing a song, I love Jesus better than ice cream. Ha, <laughs> ha. Ah, we love ice cream, don't we? we there are things that we, we really love in this world. But I love Jesus more than all of those. I want to tell you something. When Johnny passed away, um, um, he taught me a lot about worship. But we, we saw his wife and how she moved in the time of being in sorrow. And when Johnny was living, he would say, now, Kenny, I have told Betty Jo not to worship me. I know I'm wonderful, but I told her not to worship me. <laughs> you know, that, that's funny to us because we know Johnny and Kim's laughing. Because he knew as he worshiped Jesus and as Betty Jo worshiped Jesus, when the times came in her life or his life that were too hard, it wasn't that person that you worship. It's Jesus that you worship. And in the middle of that worship, we saw Betty Jo, and she was strong. I'm sure she had the times of weeping, of course, but there was a strength that rose up inside of her and that gift was being stirred. You know, John used to talk about Betty Jo. He said when she get filled with the Holy Spirit, <laughs> she wouldn't jump up and down, and she wouldn't run, and she wouldn't show much emotion. She'd go about half mast, he said, like this. And she'd show that. But he said deep inside of her, boy, her whole, she was being stirred so powerfully. He said that was her. That's her. And that is her. Because that's the way she walked through that bereavement. She was, she didn't up or down, like all up and down. She was walking with a peace that God had her in his arms. And I'm going to tell you right now, that is our Lord. And that's how he does it. We're all different. John would get happy and dance a little bit and raise his hands and glorify God. But Betty Jo, even though she was standing there, maybe half mass, and not really stirring or outwardly showing a whole lot, inside, ooh, she was worshiping. And in that time, we witnessed the very power of God in Betty Jo's life. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm witnessing it in my own life right now. Because when death comes to someone you love close, I traveled with Johnny for 40 years, and he's crazy. So we go into a place, and I would laugh my head off all the time and have fun with him. But he would always have a point of sharing Jesus. But let me tell you, I had, I had sorrow. I had uh, a deep 
uh, sorrow in me. And one night I asked him if she would pray with me, and we prayed together. And, and certain spirits had attached themselves to me by my allowing that mourning spirit, that heavy spirit. It's okay to grieve. I understand. I really, really do. And I'm still grieving, as you can see. Some of the mourning is coming out. But there were certain spirits that had attached themselves to me that were trying to make me heavy, take away the joy of the Lord in my life or the peace of the Lord. And Kim and I both prayed through the night until the peace came. And it was beautiful how God took that off, took it off of me. I don't know how many of you are walking around with heaviness on you by something that and may have happened in your life. But I want to tell you, Jesus is up to the task to remove that heaviness, to, move, to remove anything that has come on your life, not only because of sadness, but perhaps because of things that happened to you as a child or things that happened to you in your life or bitterness that you have in your life and you haven't been able to say, oh, forgive the person who did you wrong, and you haven't been able to lay it down and let it go. Many of the physical things in our lives come, sometimes they come, by the spirits that we allow to be on us. Heaviness, burdens. Uh, I know that sometimes uh, arthritis and, and things that constrict us come with unforgiveness and things like that that need to be released. God has his way. Not every time. There are things that we have in genetic or whatever in generations of our lives, but they can still be prayed over and broken over us. Let me tell you, God is a powerful God, and he wants us to do this. He wants us to have, to stir up the gift of God, the very life of God in us, by releasing ourselves to the Lord. By, by lifting our heart and our minds up to the Lord and allowing a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind to come over us through the name of Jesus. There is no God like our God. <laughs> there is no God like our God. I love as I've told you, I love to sing. I love to be with people. And I love to share Jesus with them. And you just never know when you're going to come to that place in your life where along the way you can speak into someone's life. Jesus. You can share that kind of love because Jesus has loved you first. So my heart is for you to open up your heart and your life today, and I invite you to do that today, to stir up that gift of God within you. Ask Jesus. If you've never asked Jesus into your heart, ask Jesus into your heart. And say, Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins, you rose from the grave, and you live in my heart. If you've if you're running away from God, if you've tried to do everything you could to make things better and you just can't seem to get there, come to Jesus. Let Jesus just bring you back home into that place where that spirit of love, power, and sound mind dwell. Come into that place. When Jesus comes into us in a powerful way, and bathes us with his Holy Spirit. He will take us into a deeper place of worship. He will take us into the inner chamber where we can know God in an intimate, powerful way. God is so wonderful, and he desires to touch us all in this place. And as, as I sing this song and you sing it with me, the invitation. 
is a song entitled, Send Me. I want you to join with me in singing this invitation. Gary, if you'll come, or any of the leaders or elders would be here to uh, minister to the people who come. Stir up the gift of God. I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hand. Paul was talking to Timothy. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and sound mind. Let the Lord touch you today. And as we stand together, I give you an invitation to come to the Lord to be saved, to accept Him as your personal Savior, to be bathed in His Holy Spirit, to come back to Him and give it all to the Lord, to join this church, to give yourself completely to God and make a commitment and let the gift of God be stirred up in you that you can share Jesus wherever you are in whatever way you do. God is here with us. Would you come as we sing this invitational unto you. If it's bandaging the broken, washing filthy feet, here I am, Lord, send me. If it's loving one another, even when we don't agree. Here I am, Lord, send me. If I'm poor or if I'm well. I'll serve you just the same. Here I am, Lord, send me on the mountain or the valley. I will choose to pray. Because here I am, Lord, send me. If I'm known by how I love, let my life reflect how much I love you. I love you. I need for you even as all oh, my answer will be cause I love.
in the morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, hey, God bless you, your heart. And if you was listening, you're ready to do whatever it is you ask you to do. Don't forget we're having a meal, so I hope you'll use this day and the shows you build and the highness and our kids and our parents have David. If you would just send him in and take him down and make sure they get in the special line uh, and just offer prayer, I appreciate that. And again, just uh, <laughs> spend some time enjoying each other, talking, fellowshipping, and uh, just uh, knowing that God has blessed us very richly. And Joe, will you close us in prayer? Dear Father, Lord, um, God, I thank you for the message today. Um, I thank you for everything that you had us to hear today, Lord. God, I pray that you'd be with us today as we eat. Uh, bless the food, bless the fellowship that we're going to have, and uh, be with us, keep us safe, till you bring us back together. It's in your name I pray. Amen. 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 Love you.